Before time began, there was the cube. Earth. But we were already too late. Hey everyone, welcome to Grade Game, where every student can make progress. Now, we're going to look at something really exciting today. We're going to look at Transformers. Now, I don't mean robots in disguise, sorry, no Optimus Prime here, but we have got something pretty cool, which is something that we call a demountable Transformer. This is a Transformer that we can take apart and have a look and see what happens with it. So, what we're going to do, just talk through the structure of our Transformer, and then we will look at how it works in more detail. So we've got three main components to our transformer. We've got our input coil, which we call the primary coil because the electricity gets there first. And then we've got our secondary coil where the electricity gets to second, just like school, primary, then secondary. Now in the middle, we have a laminated iron core. The laminated core is made up of thin layers of iron sandwiched together. Okay. Now if we look at our primary and secondary coil we can see that they are not electrically connected. Okay. There is no electrical connection. So there is no way physically that the electricity from here can get into this coil. But what we can do is we can use our magnetic core, our iron core, to help transfer the power from here to here. We've also got a multimeter attached so that we can have a look at the output from our transformer. So without further ado, let's have a closer look. So here we have our transformer set up. Now, transformers work on alternating current. If you apply direct current to them, they won't work. So you've got to have an alternating current. Here we've got 230 volts being applied to this coil here. Now, as you can see, this coil has 1,000 turns on it. Our secondary coil, which is here, only has 500 turns on it. So we've got a step down transformer. So it's going to reduce the voltage from 230 volts down by a ratio of 1 to 2. So it's going to halve it. So if we're going to put 230 volts in here, we're going to expect on here 115 volts. So turn it on. We can hear it humming. That shows us that it's not 100% efficient because we've got some energy being transferred to the surroundings in the form of sound, which eventually heats up the surroundings. If we look at our multimeter, we can see we've got about 110 volts. So we're losing five volts somewhere, and that you can hear is coming out through this mechanism of sound. Now, if I try and take this off the top, you will see that I can't. It's very, very difficult. The reason that it's very, very difficult is because we now have a magnetic field being induced. I've turned this off, so our magnetic field has gone away. With the transformer off, it's very easy to pick up the top of the core. However, with it on, we can see that it's very difficult and I can actually pick up the whole of the transformer. So, what's going on? Well, we've got an alternating current coming in. So every 50th of a second, it's flowing in that direction. And every next 50th of a second, it's flowing that way. Now, let's just turn that off a moment, otherwise it will give us a bit of a headache. If we think about our current, we know that when we've got a current flowing round a coil of wire, we create a magnetic field. That magnetic field is then induced inside our iron core. So because we've got an electric current, we have an induced magnetic field. Now, 1 50th of a second, this end of the coil will be a north, 
and the next 50th of a second, this end of the coil will be a north. So our magnetic field is expanding, collapsing, and then swapping over. Ooh, this reminds me of a song. Newton's laws Describe motion In terms of forces On an object Check that other video out It's quite good fun So we've got our magnetic field Expanding Collapsing And reforming in the opposite direction So what that does Is that induces a potential difference Across my coil On this side Because I've got a load attached my induced potential difference causes an induced current to flow. And it's only because we've got this magnetic core that we get our electrical induction over on this side. Without the core, the magnetic connection between these two coils is not big enough for it to actually induce our potential difference and therefore our current on this side of the transformer. Now you'll notice I said earlier that this is a step down transformer because we have more coils this side than we have that side. So it reduces the voltage. It also increases the current. What I can do with this is I can have a look and I can prove that there is a magnetic field and I can also prove to you that the current is being increased on this side of the transformer. Okay, if we look at the transformer now, we can see that we've got the primary coil, I've got rid of the secondary, and I've turned my um, top of my laminated iron core vertical. I'm going to take this solid ring, and we're going to turn the transformer on, and I'm just going to drop this over the top. Ta-da! Magnetic levitation. So what's happening here is gravity is pulling the, mag the ring down, but because it's a complete ring, we're getting an induced current. Now that induced current is going around the ring in the direction that causes it to oppose the magnetic field and the motion, meaning that it's doing work against it. So it pushes the ring up, but then of course our magnetic field changes direction, so it starts to move down, and that's going on every 50th of a second, which is why it's sort of vibrating up and down a little bit. Now, this gets quite warm, Ha! And we're going to try it again, but this time with this ring. I want you to watch closely what happens. We expect it to levitate now. It doesn't. Why? Well, this is one of those magic rings. We take our two rings, that one's still quite warm, and... Oh! We connect them together. How have we managed that? Ah, oh, well, it's all just magic. Or, in other words, science. We've got a split in our ring. There it is. So when we drop this on, we've got no induced current flow because we haven't got a complete circuit. So that shows you that we have got a magnetic field there. Now, what we're really interested in is what happens when we really step it down. So we're going from a thousand turns to one, two, three, four, I've six turns. So you can see that we're going to seriously increase the amount of current here. So I'll set this up and we'll have a look really closely at what's going on. Here we go. I've zoomed in right on our coil here. Now if you notice, I've got two nails here. We've got our coil of a thousand turns and we've got our coil of six turns. So we are going to seriously drop the voltage and we are going to drastically increase the current. Now we only get a current when I touch these nails together. Watch carefully. Wow, that was going really brightly. Because we were getting such a large current flowing through here, what I've actually done is I've managed to weld the two nails together. So we can see they are well and truly welded together. Oh, pull them apart. So I hope you've enjoyed that looking at transformers. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel or check out some of the other YouTube videos that I've got. We'll be looking at transformer equations in another video very shortly. Good luck with your GCSEs.